Noah, baseball is big in the biggest little city. You have those who made it to the show. There's the Reno Aces at the downtown ballpark and high school programs pumping out college bound players year after year. But there's one family in town synonymous with the game, that being the Goldsmiths. You have Buddy, Heather, Garrett, Gunner, and Gabby. They spent their entire lives on or around the diamond. They're also resilient because they have to be. While many families live their lives game by game, the Goldsmiths live theirs pitch by pitch because life decided to play hardball. In the game of baseball, you get three strikes, then you're out. Three potential adversities for every batter who steps up to the plate. Buddy Goldsmith knows that. He was a college coach. And it's been a baseball family for a really long time. Buddy met his wife Heather, a nurse, at a baseball game years ago. The two have three kids, Garrett, Gunner, and Gabby. The Goldsmiths bounced around a lot. As the kids have been, it hasn't always been easy. Most of our moves were when they were young. The moves came as Buddy got new jobs. Stops included Nevada, UNLV, and New Mexico. Garrett and Gunner fell in love with the sport that their dad coached. Gabby was active and made a living on the playground, getting bumps and bruises all the time. Life was chaotic. Strike one. Those dots to me weren't anything like Per, like peculiar. I knew what they were. They were petechiae. I had seen them before and it's an ominous sign um, usually for um, childhood leukemia. When she was just seven years old, Gabby, the youngest in the family, was diagnosed with aplastic anemia. It's an extremely rare condition that keeps the body from producing new blood cells as a result of damaged bone marrow. My child could die. If you were to get cut, it would not stop bleeding until you had no blood left to bleed. The goldsmiths had to make a decision. Oh, my gosh, um, we're going to Oakland, aren't we? In the summer of 2011, and in just 20 minutes, the family packed and headed from Reno across the Sierra Nevada mountains to Oakland Children's Hospital. Her and I lived in Oakland in that hospital room in the bone marrow transplant house, um, just her and I. For four months. I couldn't go to school for almost two years. Gabby missed all of second grade and part of third grade. She took 30 pills a day. The family knew the diagnosis, but they needed a fix. A bone marrow transplant topped the priority list. Everyone in the family took a blood test and hoped for a match. Garrett's blood work did, only a 20% chance. They told me it was my decision um, if I wanted to do this, but I, there was no question I wanted to do this. We just had this like kind of unspeakable special bond. The transplant was successful. 12-year-old Garrett put his young but promising baseball career at risk to save his little sister. It really hurt the first couple days. I remember being barely able to walk and having my dad help me do everything. Life has just thrown me curveballs and I've had to hit them and figure out how to continue on to my next at bat. In the 10 years since, Gabby has lived life, although cautiously. She cheered competitively, but he became an area scout for the Kansas City Royals. Heather worked at Carson Tahoe Regional Medical Center, and Garrett and Gunner graduated high school with stops at Reno High before signing to play college baseball. Strike two. Here we go. You know, here we go again. In June 2021, after a routine visit to her doctor, Heather was diagnosed with triple positive breast cancer. I basically had six rounds of chemo. But the Goldsmiths are optimistic. Heather continues to fight. Her first mastectomy was a success. Her second is scheduled. Strike three. How much is one family going to be asked to endure, I think, is something that goes through my mind a lot. August 1st, 2021. We were celebrating our anniversary um, up at a family house on Donner Lake. A place the family had visited for decades, just 40 minutes west of Reno. And on the final day of the trip, Garrett and Gunner wanted to go out on a boat with some friends. We packed up and we left early that morning, said goodbye to the boys. The boys went down to the lake and uh, we headed home. Got out of the shower to a call from my younger son who was absolutely hysterical, who told me that I needed to, to get up there as soon as possible. Then Gunner's call stopped coming. Heather, who was driving to work, turned around. When the family got to the lake, the Truckee Police Department was there. Gunner had helped pull his best friend out of the water before giving him CPR. Garrett, just breathe, come on. It was too late. 
what was your life like six months ago? And I just devastated. You just, you never imagine that. Garrett Goldsmith was just 22 years old. He would rock into a party and be the life of a party. Dad, the toilet's smoking. The toilet's smoking. He did have a, a crazy good smile. He was, he loved to take pictures. <laughs> Within a week of Garrett's passing, the family planned a celebration of life at Montreux Golf and Country Club, where he worked. There could be like 300 people here, maybe. You gave me the greatest gift that anyone could ever ask for, that being the gift of life. Even though he was six months older than me, uh, I try to be just like him. <laughs> the sun came shining through the trees and, you know, you never want to do that for your child or have a service for your child. But I think, um, I know that it was beautiful. It was important, at least from, from her health standpoint, to bring closure on some level to something so that she could move forward and do what she needed to do in terms of, you know, look out for her own health. For the Goldsmiths, Garrett's passing, the third strike, was a drop third strike in this game of life, and the family beat out the throw to first base. The at-bat hasn't gone as planned, but they're aboard, looking for the next opportunity to make a difference. The family still keeps Garrett's phone active. Most of them just want one chance to play one more baseball game with them. Thousands of texts with positive messages have poured in since that day at Donner. You have to live the rest of your life being the very best human that you can be so that you have the opportunity to give your son a hug again in heaven. Now the Reno community is up to pinch hit. Just having, you know, people here and recognizing their challenges and, and showing the support that our community offers on a daily basis means the world to them. The community rallies, uh, we found that out. Many of the people that we've met, many of our long-standing friends here in this community are through baseball. A fitness fundraiser to help pay for medical bills hosted by St. Mary's, another event to bring in money put on by the Reno High baseball team. It's not your time to give back yet. That time will come, and, and I look forward to that time. The Goldsmiths might feel behind on the scoreboard, but baseball is played one inning at a time. They haven't run out of outs, and the only thing worse than losing is giving up. The Goldsmiths are working on setting up a scholarship and baseball tournament in Garrett's name. If you'd like to help the family with their medical expenses, we have a link set up on our website, colotv.com. Just click on that story where you can make a donation.